What's up, everybody? My name is Nozibela Kamgana Mayaba. Welcome to Don't Hold Back. This is where we say it loud. It's a very special day for me because this is our 10th episode. Today, we have a very hot topic. Um, some call it obligation. Some call it our responsibility, right? Um, others have already have a term for it, black tax. Um, where does it start? Where does it end? Is it our responsibility to make sure that we manage the expectation that comes with, you know, work? King. Um, and to unpack all of this, I have a very special guest. Hey, Betuna. He's my husband. He's the yin to my yang. Okay. He's the guy that wakes me up at 5 a.m. to go and run. Yay! Hi, baby. Hello. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeez. we must behave, ne? Oh, okay. This is a very Order. professional setting. Bless. <laughs> okay, listen, usually, you know, um, on the show, um, a guest brings in a snack, but now I brought in a snack, um, and that's a bell tongue, but I'll get into the why uh, much later on. Now, let's get the ball rolling. Um, when it comes to black tax, I want to take it back, particularly when it comes to you. Did you always know that you are going to be the breadwinner of the family? Where did it start for you? No, uh, I didn't know that I'm going to be the breadwinner. But I realized as uh, um, time uh, went by that the responsibility will be for me to ensure that I take care of, of the whole family. Because I realized my older brothers that were actually just not there mm. for the family. So when I started working already, I mean, they were uh, working, but there was nothing that was coming from home and nothing what that was being taken care of. So it was upon me to make sure that that uh, side to ensure that we have a home, mm. uh, I look after it. What Was that instilled in you? Um, the, the reason why I'm asking is because usually mm. someone else would say, ne, if my brothers uh, did not take up the initiative to take care of home, then why should I be different? So was the responsibility given on you by I we are born again. Okay, the brothers are not doing what they're supposed to do, so you are the only hope. Yeah, so we we got the same education. Uh, let's start from from there. Uh, we got the same opportunities. I think um, I'm just one of those that I was able to see the reverse side of misbehaving, and in particular, uh, alcohol. Okay. And and because um, my mum saw that uh, she then took advantage of that mm. and then, uh, you know, used me to, to make sure that, you know, I look after not only my younger brothers, but also uh, one of the brothers that was ahead of me, mm. uh, take care of, the, of him as well. Mm. There are countless stories of you when you were growing up mm. um, and some of them are heartbroken, uh, heartbreaking for me to hear. Mm -hmm. um, there's one in particular where you told me, I think um, your mama, my mom-in-law had been working at another town and you had been left with a younger brother mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. one of your, of your nephews. And um, the younger brother fell into a pit, yes. a, a toilet pit. And how old were you at the time? I was seven. What happened? So w the kids were playing outside and obviously I was looking after uh, my niece and my younger brother. Mm. Um, as I was you know, preparing meal inside. So I, my, my niece came running and said, mm. there's this thing that has happened. Mm. And we then eventually called the people from the location, Elali Noganya location. Mm. And whilst peop, all the people were figuring out as to what they're going to do, um, because, you know, it was a bit longer. Um, then I volunteered uh, to, you know, uh, to go down to the go pit. Down and because I was a little bit lighter as well. Mm -hmm. And he, he was two years, two to three. No, no he was three years mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the story is because mm -hmm. I've been one of the people that has been, been mm -hmm. very transparent of Yes, the responsibility, the financial responsibility of taking care of our families and the pleasure of seeing our families, you know, getting from one level to the next because of our contribution. However, there's also the psychological part and the, and the burden that mm. it, 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 it gives someone. Um, for you, 
do you feel like the 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 were parts where you felt it was a burden to take care of your family whether it was financially whether it was psychologically um and how did it affect you yeah look uh, and no one prepares you for these things um at the age of 23 i felt that you know what I, i need a way out of this but i just didn't know how okay and because i started dating a little later um at the age 20 so at 25 i got married and the reason behind that was that i just wanted to have things that are attached to me in other words my own home so that i don't have this responsibility okay. uh, of looking after somebody else's uh, is, uh, so home okay. so that's what basically basically happened so if i hear you right mm-hmm. one of the reasons that you married quite early mm-hmm. um was to run away from, from that responsibility, responsibility. and to finally have that um you know reasoning but i can look i also have my own family to take care of precisely how did the family take that yeah no they didn't take that kindly um and uh, obviously i mean from a thousand rand that i would uh, use at home it meant that maybe it's a quarter of that amount that i would spend at home okay so it really you know impacted or affected them heavily And now we met much later on and uh went into a relationship also got married. Um it's funny because we have more or less a similar, you know, background. Um and what I mean about that is that although we the youngest in the mm-hmm. family, but we took up more of the responsibility of taking care of the household. Yes. And then there's sometimes a nice thing about putting those two people together because you know they are both responsible yeah. you know in um um individuals but also there's a pressure ba okay not only do you now have to deal with Nozi's family mm. you also now have to deal with Sku's family mm-hmm. right um i also have my own perception and and <laughs> um opinion on of how this um went when we started you know um in during our first years of marriage but i want to hear from you when you now got into now the second marriage with me mm-hmm. um w- what did you think you were going to ma- to do different to manage all those expectations but regardless of whether you married or not you still need to build yeah well there's there's a good and a bad side of um uh, looking after a, a, f- a home mm. or a family or somebody else's responsibility um and and one thing that i learned was that so when we we met i, I needed to understand what is it that you are actually responsible for okay so that in planning as we start our own home i know exactly how much money mm-hmm. now i'm talking rents and cents how much money is actually going to be spent there and in those things key questions were uh, were those things important mm-hmm. are they necessary anything that is outside this definition so i needed to make sure that you know what no this mm-hmm. one is put aside because we wouldn't sacrifice our own life for or for things that are a nice to have mm. on the other side. I think that was that was very key uh, for us and we have actually mastered that because all the time there are always calls asking for this and this and this mm. but we always ask those key, those key questions is it just a nice to have uh, things it's something that's important and necessary to have. Yeah. Mm. And uh, at first I mean we've come a long way definitely and we see the benefits of it but at first though those yeah those conversations were very difficult yeah, very difficult because also you've had more experience than I've had mm. and I had to now start the conversation um of y- uh, your your 25 year old version mm. where I, I my family felt I got all the money that you you were giving must us continue. it must continue as well you know and then also my family feeling to some degree but now that I'm married I want to take care of you know the other family family or just as two uh more than I'm taking care of them. Mm. Um yeah, I thought that was very interesting. So to anyone that is listening that is married that still needs to navigate this whole financial responsibility um from their families or their in-laws, what are some of the mechanisms um that you would that you would just like to talk about? For example, I know one of the things that we had discussed is okay, If my family wants money. Mm. Th- <laughs> if my fam if my mom had to call now and and need money, 
it doesn't come from me mm. it mm. comes from you you facilitate it yes yeah. and vice versa if <laughs> mom in law calls mm-hmm. um and asks for money from you it comes from me mm. and the reason for that was because we are trying to build um this this narrative with them to say mm-hmm. it's not longer about unozi it's mm-hmm. not longer about usku it's about these two people that are married and and making a decision together and that you don't want to divide them i mean look where we are now uh, so those calls are to that we used to get in the middle of the month we don't because they know when i call school hey uza school is going to say hey no z i must speak to my wife firstly and then my face my wife is going to facilitate this so uh, as much as we 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 we, we do that uh, deliberately we want them to feel bad before they ask <laughs> <laughs> so because you you think twice uh, yeah, okay let me call them i'm probably will have to wait and whilst i'm waiting the money is going to come from this side so who am i going to thank so it's just the psychological part of it mm. and that has helped uh, immensely mm. i want to go back to the the question that i asked um earlier on or something that i touched on is the it, it's a pleasure um mm. making sure that our families are taken care of mm. i mean whether it's buying a house yes. whether it's building elusikisiki i mean i don't know how many years you've worked for your family and you've built them a house i bought mom a house paid it off and all mm. of those things but i i sometimes feel there's a level of us overlooking the the psychological part of these mm-hmm. responsibilities because there are people that cannot afford the school yeah to do these things mm-hmm. and because they cannot afford they are made to feel bad but it's your responsibility to take care of five younger siblings it's your responsibility to take care of the entire household on a salary of 2000 rand mm-hmm. that's when i'm like that's not fair because at the end of the day this is not why you raised this person mm, you mm. are not raising this person to take care of other siblings what's your take on that yeah that's a, it's a tough one really and um we in between i always say we have a choice uh whether or not to support and how far do we go so i'll, I'll give you an example so i have older brothers who have kids all over so from time to time because they know me and in their mind they think that I'm doing well because of the wife was popular so you get these calls all the time eh uh, damni i need uh, this and this and this can you please uh, do it for me so the question is <laughs> as much as it's tempting to help mm. and if i have something but if i start doing it now how many more kids that are going to uh, come and then ask because there are many of mm. of these boys so 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 what was key or what is key is to just define what really is family and who matters the most who is really close to to your bloodline because you'll end up helping the whole community Mm. and Especially sacrificing yourself and sacrificing in, in the process and it's not a nice thing to do at all mm. so so i've had to to really define and in my definition it's my mom mm. and my brothers mm. they are kids i unfortunately especially now that they still are alive i because i mean i'll end up having only 5 cent in my pocket mm. i can't afford mm. yeah, well. i like what you said earlier mm. on once again define mm-hmm. um who who is who mm-hmm. and secondly also define the need mm-hmm. define the need is it necessary mm-hmm. or is it is something that's nice to have mm. and if it's nice to have mm-hmm. then it's going to be nice when there's money mm. unfortunately when there's no money yep. then it goes back to what is the need exactly i think that's a crux actually mm-hmm. um because i i honestly at first when i was trying to manage all these expectations i'm trying to make everyone happy yeah, it's, you, it's you nice when everyone is luxury. happy that's luxury <laughs> uh, don't just key things at roof food school mm. transport look at the distance okay Yeah, no, if it's cool, less than 10 kilometers. Ki- if it's less than 10 kilometers a person <laughs> can walk. <laughs> you are so harsh. Yeah. Yeah. No, honestly, yeah. I think mm. that's one of the things that I had to learn, um especially when we got together and I because 
the reason why guys we discuss these things is it can have a heavy burden yeah. on a marriage if you do not manage discuss them. these yeah. things mm. if you do not manage these things we've had you know a friend that has been married and this one is quite funny because um she is um black and the husband is white um and the husband being white it does not know this responsibility because as soon as they're 18 they're out of the house mm. taking care of themselves now this 30 year old gets calls uh, they need money and the husband is like why are you taking care <laughs> oh, yeah. of, of these people why because it's not your responsibility so when it comes to marriage one um, I, I once again can you just repeat the key thing when it comes to marriage and being on the same page when it comes to um, financial responsibilities of two families yeah well I mean this is based on what we have done I mean we have had to sit down and have a, a proper conversation as to to things that matters the most to us mm. um, because um, you know sacrificing that w- the life that we want to live, as a result of these things can have a, a ripple effect or a huge impact along the line. Mm-hmm. So we needed to clearly, you know, set the scene and define exactly what is it that we want. Mm-hmm. The second thing is that if we have a few uh, rents or extra rents, if we support, how much do we support? And also we need to make sure that we balance that. We can't always go uh, uh, go according to grace. Mm. It said it, grace does not apply in everything. So you need to really be specific and be deliberate in ensuring that, you know, you balance these things. So that definition of us, how we want to live our life and how we're going to support the extended families and who in these extended families that you're going to support, that was very key for us. Mm-hmm. Just before I go into the rapid fire questions, mm-hmm. it? I'm thinking about, you remember one of the strategies that you taught me? When someone asks you for money, do not give them on that day. <laughs> ah, yeah. Delay it. Uh-uh. Why should I delay it? Mm-mm, mm-mm. So, 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 because the minute you do that, you'll always those get those calls and that, pe- that person is going to expect that money. You just need to work on the expectation. So my brother, I mean, you know, my, my younger brother used to call and say, hey, I need uh, 300 rent now. And I used to do it immediately. And I realized that mm-mm, his problems, they cannot be urgent and important. And yet he does not have anything. Mm. So let me deal with that. Uh, even if I know that I'll give him money, but let not give him exactly at the time that he needs. At least maybe after five days, <laughs> let's say he is it. I can't. You are it's called tough love. <laughs> you're very good when it comes to tough love. I'm more. Mm. Oh shame, man! Could just give it to him yeah. now. <laughs> mm. Okay, listen. We are going to now go into our rapid fire questions. Mm-hmm. Um, don't think about it. I'm going to be asking you a few yeah. questions. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna. I'm asking you these questions about me. Okay. Yeah. So number one, what's my favorite meal? After nine. After 9 p.m. <laughs> She's my favorite meal. What am So, all these chips, biltongs, and sweets, <laughs> everything. After 9 p.m. Before, up until 12. Before 9? Yeah, before, before 9, I only now that you eat agriculture. Uh, no, so, is it salad and things salad. like that? Now. Salad. Mm, it's only now. I've always been eating. Because you're working on the... Yes, on okay. the summer boats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, gosh. I don't like this question. But describe my driving style. Yo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> please describe me. Please. Okay, the driving style, I just need to be wide awake all the time because, wow, uh, it burns the fuel. I uh, do not. The car burns the fuel. So you just know she does not drive at the average speed What's once the, the car speed? burns the, f- the fuel. What's the average, average speed? Average speed, 110, 120. I drive at 110, ah. 110. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay, listen, um, when was our first date? Second week of June ah, 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't play uh, with think, second week of June. I think between the seventh, when was? But you're going on a graduation the next day. It was on the seventh of June. Whatever. Okay. Seventh of June. I'm yes, not expecting 2016. that. I don't think that's true. I think yes, it was. I, mean, I think it was weekend. May. No, 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 no. School. We met in April. No, so it must no, have no, been no. May. A month. You later. were going on a graduation. You pretended as if you're going overseas at home. <laughs> you brought in your big suitcase. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. What is the color of my dress on, my, on the first date? Oh, I pink all over. <laughs> Even when we got married, the broom was pink. Whatever. Mm. 
You know what? I didn't want to have you as but a guest. You're honestly the broom. What Remember broom? When we were staying in the south, the broom that you bought in the Oh yeah, true. It was pink. Now that <laughs> I, now that I recall, I Yo, actually wanted to like pink things. Re- renovate our whole bedroom to pink. That's no, always been uh, my like please. my dream. Okay. I don't like this question as well. This is the last one. What is my favorite film? Yo, Miss Quentin Genia- <laughs> Geniality. <ne? laughs> uh, she's, she's got, uh, she saved it in your, in your laptop and <laughs> also on the TV. <laughs> you played it, I don't know how many times. I lost count. <laughs> but when we got married, you had watched it over 50 times. <laughs> I know and every line. <laughs> I know every line. And you pretend as if you don't know. I know. <laughs> very interesting thing. And sometimes, can I be honest? Mm. Um, sometimes when I ask you to watch a, a, um, a movie with me, most of the time, ninety nine point nine percent, I've already watched it. But then I pretend like I haven't watched it. And you it. will laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. uh. Okay, it's your turn. Ask me questions. Oh, where was I born? Lusikisik, Ekosa. Okay. What was my nickname growing up? Oh my gosh. For some reason, I don't know why I'm remembering Gelele Gisa, but that's Jacob Zuma's. Um, um, what's that? Lebonde. No, Didi. So, how many siblings do I have, and what are their names? Okay, in total, you are seven. Mm-hmm. Um, those that are alive are four. Mm-hmm. Three passed away. Two sisters, one brother. Okay. Um, in terms of the name, Putolani, Putmonabisi, Sabelo, Skumbuzo. I don't okay. know the other three that passed away. To be okay. fair, I've never met them. Yeah, okay. Okay, forgiven. Uh, it's actually, it's Maxwell. Yes. Harrison, Lawrence, Goodman, Niceman, Darlington. Oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> like, I cannot. Um, where would I be on a random Saturday morning? Um, cycling, swimming, or running. Okay. See? At least. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. Mm-hmm. So as we're wrapping up um the, the show, talking about, you know, um expectations, financial expectations, managing them with our families. Um, once again, I think the last few things from my side is we are two responsible people. Uh, mm. we'll always take care of our families, but we've seen the need to to put in place boundaries Mm -hmm. um, so that it does not compromise our own relationship, Mm -hmm. our own marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, Because isn't there like things that pertain to families can be very sensitive. Very. um, very And can either make or break um, a marriage. And one of the things that I appreciate, I think about our relationship and I'll continue to say this is how we continue to protect each other um, from our own families. Um, there's nothing that my family can say about you, um, even at your absence, because they know I will always protect you. Mm. And that's how I feel also about your family. Whenever you are not even around, I don't feel uncomfortable um, that someone is going to tell me something mm. um, because you're not there, because it, I, you've already put in that boundary for me. So I appreciate that about you. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add for for couples out there that are struggling um, to just manage all of these things. There's a double-story house, uh, Mtata, that still needs fixing. And they don't know where they're going to get the money from. But everyone is looking at them. Yeah, I think in the same way, they would like to live a certain life. It is important that they firstly uh, ask themselves what is it that they want to achieve today and tomorrow. The second thing is that when they define or put those measures in place, they need not to shift the responsibility. Now, let me be specific around there. Um, You find that between me and you, the responsibility shifted from our parents. So they expected us to do certain things for them. And yet, Those were their own responsibilities. Okay. So it's therefore important that we manage those whilst you are preparing yourself for a better future. The minute you you know how and what is it that you want to achieve, it's much easier to address whatever issues that may impact your existence in that marriage. Mm. So I think that for me is, is, is very key in that in anything that you do and you prepare ahead, you do not shift the responsibility. The okay. responsibility sits with you, with that right, right person. I like so that. earlier on, you mentioned something. You said, 
um, uh, folks that are different in our color, um, they at 18, they go out and they become responsible on their own. That's how they, 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 that's how they are taught mm. as they grow up. But not all of them. Sometimes circumstances uh, change. Yeah. But it is, it is, it's the parents that never um, delegated the responsibilities. They made sure that they teach the child very well and prepare that child for the future. Mm. And, and then that's, that's my view. I like that because in my mind, I, I think the one thing I'm getting is do not be an enabler, mm -hmm. rather empower. Mm. So do not be the person that enables this person um, to continue to ask money or not do anything because they know at the end of the month they're going to get money from their brother or their sister. Yeah. However, be more empowering. How can this person make money possibly for themselves? Mm. And at the end of the day, we are not responsible, let's say, to raise you know, um, siblings or, or any other person because it was not our responsibility in the first place. Yeah. We are there to assist where we can mm. with whatever resources that we can. Yeah. I like that. And a nice topic. Okay, um, now that we're ending the show, just before that, uh, I, I brought in Bill Tong. Okay, because I felt like, you know, after nine, when we've done everything eh, and we like putting in a nice movie, it's one of those snacks that we really enjoy together with our non-alcoholic champagne or wine. Yeah, one and then two. So, yeah, there's uh, no dip store behind the biltong. It's uh, just that uh, it's my favorite you snack. Eat it as a snack or as food? I, just an, I, eat it, I eat it as everything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I eat it as everything. Yeah. There's something after nine and yeah, me uh, eating. You start eating. <laughs> down the stairs to the kitchen all the time. To be to be fair, it's not that heavy food. It's like it's like it's next. Uh -uh, it's got lots of calories. Now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you eat the biltong with me? We're gonna okay. take one piece each. Okay. Okay, let's do it. And you know they've been in the house for like about at least I've been good over the last couple of weeks. These ones have been in the house for about a month or so. The the interesting thing is that you hid them. So <laughs> <laughs> you you're hiding them from yourself, <laughs> not even from me. I know. <laughs> because I know I'm all and then I can't find them With sometimes. Them <laughs> <laughs> I'm like they were here. I don't know where I should find them. Anyway, thank you so much, school, for, for joining me today for such a very thoughtful conversation. Now I realize why your mother called you good men. You know? You should have also been called wise yeah, men. Want to love. <laughs> wise men. Wise yes. men. Oh, uh -uh. Is there a wise man in the family? No. Uh -uh. Yeah, good men, wise men. Nice men. No, wise men. Also mm. suit you well. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, honey. I really appreciate thank you. you. Thank you for thank joining you. us for this 10th episode. Until next time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And that is where we leave it for today. This was Don't Hold Back, where we say it loud, a podcast in collaboration with DW, Jacaranda FM, and East Coast Radio. You can catch this episode and many other episodes on wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. My name is Nozibele Kamgana Mayaba. It has been such a great pleasure. I'll see you next time. Don't hold back. Say it loud. Say it loud.